Well, hello everybody. Welcome back to Best Life and Beyond. We're here in the Melrose Arts District in West Hollywood today. More importantly, uh, I'm here to paint a piece today, a graffiti piece, a uh, mural. Some say street art, I say graffiti. This is uh, an event that's happening today for the PTTP Paint the Town podcast, as well as a new paint line is dropping today, Go Spray Paint. They're also sponsoring the event. A couple of my crewmates, my old graffiti crewmates, are, are painting today. Kind of a gathering, a meetup of sorts at a place called the Fame Yard, which we've been painting for a long time here on Melrose. It's kind of a, a spot that uh, has some legal space. You gotta, you gotta get permission to do this. This is not uh, just run up and hit the wall. This is uh, all sanctioned. I've been lucky enough to, to be a part of this today. So I'm gonna take you through the process, show you uh, how we do this stuff. Now, when I say graffiti crews, I don't mean gangs. This is a group of guys that since before high school, well, right about high school age, I guess ninth, 10th grade, we all came together with the like-minded interest of creating graffiti art born out of the hip hop era out of New York City. I could get into all of that, but basically, you know, there's break dancing, there's rapping, there's emceeing uh, and graffiti. It's all forms of rocking. Rock the mic, rock the walls, rock the dance floor, that type of thing, rock the turntables. This was my way of becoming part of the hip hop culture because I loved hip hop so much when it first came around. And the cool thing about graffiti is it's, it's all about authenticity. It's about being unique. It's about being original and striving to push yourself. Anyways, I have my own little style that I've kind of developed over the years that it's changed as I've gotten older, but I've kind of settled into this kind of 3D style that I like to do. But like I said, I'll take you through the process today. We'll meet some of the people that are here today, interesting folks. I've met so many interesting people doing graffiti art over the years, people that I probably would never have crossed paths with. So I am grateful for that. Uh, I've learned a lot. I learn every time I do this. It's a fun process. It's a little bit of a stressful process. It's a creative endeavor and I love doing it, creating something that, uh, you know, it might be up for a little while. Who knows how long it'll stay up. Uh, usually this place gets a lot of respect, meaning it's not gonna get, you know, drawn on, written on, tagged on. So hopefully it'll stay up for a decent amount of time till the next artist comes through and, and makes their mark and gives the world a little, little piece of them. Also, this event is sponsored by a very good friend of mine, fellow crewmate from TCF, that's the crew, I should have mentioned that. The Chosen Few, the city's finest. It's an acronym for our name, very common in the graffiti world. One of my fellow crewmates, Gorilla One, he, uh, he puts things together. He's a producer of types. Uh, he's been producing things for years, whether it's clothing lines, whether it's shows, whether it's events. This guy does it all, creates things, brings people together. He's been part of this art world and this graffiti world and this hip hop world for a long time and in the Los Angeles community, very well known. So shout out to Gorilla One for bringing me in on this one. You'll meet him later. Hopefully he'll be here. I'm pretty sure he'll be here. And the PTTP show, which is the Paint the Town podcast. Go check that out. Guy named Teacher, really talented uh, street artist that I met over the years who has created his own techniques in this world and just a great guy always making things and uh, I respect that about him you'll meet him later and uh, there'll be some music some art and some culture here on Melrose Ave all right I'm talking too much we got to get started I don't have a lot of time let's go do this All right, there, there's the spot I've been uh, blessed with, formerly with a piece from Menso One. Thanks, Menso, for, uh, for the respect, brother. It's always tough at these legal spots like this to, to go over work that's previously here, especially stuff that you respect. But, uh, you know, I'll do the same thing for the next guy. Let's get started. All right, got a new respirator, because safety first. Breathing all these fumes is not healthy, so this is the best way to prevent any kind of, you know, exposure, which you don't want. You end up with whatever colors you're using. I know it sounds gross, but all your boogers, they're that color. And you know that that's not good because it's toxic. Hey, check out the piece from uh, Dirk Cobain, one of the homies, his Valentine's Day piece. Bart's crying because he's been heartbroken. I also wear gloves when I do this because I don't like getting all the spray paint all over my hands. It takes a long time to get that stuff off. So it's better just to wear a glove. I've got multiples, you know, disposable ones that you can get. 
uh, at Home Depot and such. Just makes life a lot easier. Peel it off, you're done, you're good. Water, stay hydrated. And I'm going with a, uh, a green color scheme. Three different shades, and you'll see how that works uh, for the style that I do. All right, tips. This is the key to success in keeping clean lines. Uh, you still have to have some can control. I've been doing this since 84, 85. Uh, started off as a toy, as they call them. It's like a kook surfer. Everybody starts off as a toy. I'm still learning, so I'm not by any means any kind of like uh, world-class guy, but I pride myself on the clean lines. And so you'll notice there is, there's nobody else here yet. They're gonna be here soon, but I gotta get started. I'm lagging. <laughs> Trying to do this and vlog at the same time is gonna be difficult. This process is as tedious as it is, but I'm really challenging myself today. But I'm gonna get started. How about we uh, start some music? Break time. Got to step back. So one thing you got to do when you're painting a mural or a graffiti piece or whatever, something of a larger scale, you got to always step back to see kind of how it looks from afar because you're painting up close the whole time and it's just, you kind of get lost in it. And uh, as far as, especially when I'm doing these things that involve uh, so many of the same repetitive lines that have to be at the right angle. I have to make sure the angles are right. When I first started doing this style, I would always start to, the angles would start to slowly get more like that towards the end. So I have to keep an eye on that and then just see what the piece is dictating. Cause I like to just let the piece, you know, tell me uh, where it wants to go. Cause I freestyle these things, meaning that I, I don't have much of a plan. I just kind of start going um, and then just, make it look good and balance it. That's kind of the only goal for me on these things. It doesn't say anything. It's not a traditional graffiti piece where it has a has my name or anything like that. So yeah, this is the, the process. So I don't know if you could tell in that time lapse. So I, I have a, a light, a medium, and a dark. So it's three colors that create this kind of 3D effect. You got the light kind of green here, and then the Kelly green, and then this dark green. And uh, you know, when you put them in the right configuration, it gives it like that kind of 3D blocky look, Tetris, people have said. All right, one of the homies has arrived. He is here. I have known this guy, I would say since probably 1985, 86, probably somewhere in that range. Uh, we've, we've been running around doing this graffiti thing forever. Stories that I can't tell you, um, but we've grown up and, and uh, you know, we're all successful human beings now. <laughs> I don't know if that makes any sense, but uh, there he is right there. He's working on his piece. That's Chris. That's nice one, N Y S E. And uh, dude, we haven't painted since I want to say the 80s. I think it was probably 89. 89. Maybe 88. Dude, this is crazy. We've been painting together a long time. A long time. I was saying earlier, we started out as toys together, which everybody does. You gotta start somewhere. You gotta start somewhere. It's like being a surfer. You start out as a kook. Everybody goes through it. Um, and then we're always still learning. That's the beauty of this. This uh, I think this whole thing is like you're constantly expanding your repertoire and you're learning every time you do it right yeah totally i mean it really uh just the power of creativity and like to come to the wall and just create something that didn't exist the day before 
it's a really special feeling. I really like, I don't know, I think connects us to our childhood in, in ways that are really meaningful to our uh, growth nowadays. So yeah, it's cool. So true, that, that connectivity to childhood is so true. And then, uh, and to kind of let yourself still push yourself uh, because these things take a lot of prep, a lot of planning, a lot of effort, and then you gotta finish it. You gotta, you gotta have good time management. Uh, you gotta manage your paint. You gotta have enough paint when you go to the wall because you can't leave the wall till it's done, right, Chris? You can't leave till it's done. <laughs> gotta finish. Gotta finish. Gotta finish. So he's working on, uh, it's, a, it's, it's his name there. It says Nice, N-Y-S-E, and he's starting to kind of map it out a little bit and get the, get the, the basic structure there. You can see it happening. And we'll check back in with him in a little bit and see how he's doing. Got to mix that paint. There it goes. He's filling in his background. You know, it's a workout too. You it's a, know, it is a workout. You get tan. I mean, it's yeah. kind of everything you ever wanted. You're gonna feel this tomorrow. Oh yeah, for <laughs> sure. Okay, back to this complicated thing. So I'm gonna start laying in the medium color here. Here's one of the things, here's one of the things that kind of is, is difficult sometimes when you have this, I've got this piece of wood here in the middle, so it's hard for me to, you know, get my lines going and as well as you have to kind of paint to it to make it look like it's continuing and that, so you make that kind of that piece of wood disappear. It's always difficult. You can see here the previous piece that Menso did, how his line, look how clean that line is and it's going on two different planes of dimension there. Always tough. So there's the green laid out. What I'll do eventually is I'll cut back, as we call it, with this, this lighter color to sharpen that. I'll paint over that to make the edge sharp. You'll see that happen. Okay, so this one, I've already got the dark green laid out, so see this one come together. So that's kind of a cut back there. See how I sharpened that up by going over it. So there you go. And I've got a little bit of a overlap there that I'll cut back the yellow to make that connection perfect there. All the tedious process, but uh, yeah. This is, uh, this is how it's done. Katie has arrived to the fame yard. Hello everyone. This is the fame yard, Katie. Have you been here yet? I basically have been on Melrose for the last, I'm gonna go ahead and say half an hour trying to find this little place. I was looking for like a big old lot. And while it is a big lot, yeah. <laughs> I did not look at, I want you to see the little, like this is what I was supposed to find. 
That's the little opening. So Chris was uh, throwing up five behind you because I told him that your 25 minutes has probably been about five minutes of you looking around. <laughs> <laughs> no, <we're laughs> probably. Nice one, nice. That's why they call him nice one, see? It probably was, but it felt like 25. It felt like 45 minutes. So you're here to back me up because now you can film and I cannot do two things at once. I know. I'm so uh, proud of you. Look at you, overachiever. Oh, man. You're a stud. You have no idea. Here. No, this guy's a stud. Let's focus he on Chris for a minute. A uh, you can see the 3D is starting to come together on the, on the E wow, there, right? Yeah, yeah. So. I always like to segregate my letters, so I'll, cover, I'll color each letter differently. Right. But I also like the integration, because they have to live together, but they also have to live on their own. So I often will switch outlines and fills between colors, like in this case, this is my S, it's outlined with, a, with that light blue color. Right. And the letter next to it is the E, which is filled with the light blue color. Gotcha. And vice versa. Uh, so it creates a really visual sort of balance. There's a method to this madness. There is, there is. <laughs> wow. And I noticed, uh, did you use a brush for some of this work here? I did, all the fill is uh, done with a brush. So you can tell that it's been done with a brush. He likes to kind of mix his, uh, is that the brush? No, that's a different yeah, brush. I was gonna say, that thing looks raggedy right there. <laughs> that was not the brush. There it is, there it is right there. A little yeah. sponge brush. All right, that's cool. And, yeah. then, and then he's then got his can... bag of tricks there too. It's in a cooler, which is a brilliant idea, oh, dude. Cool. Yeah. It's only brilliant when you remember to put like the water and the beer. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Otherwise, it's just a big suitcase filled with paint. True. Oh, I could go get whatever. <laughs> but then he's even, he's even got a case for his tips that are segregated, which I, uh, mine are just in a bag, just like, <laughs> I gotta search around for ones that are good, but you know. This is what I talk about, about being prepared and coming with a, you know, with an intent and having all your stuff ready to go. You gotta be prepared to do this stuff. And it's just like life, you gotta be prepared for it. So uh, yeah, this thing's coming together. We'll keep checking back in with Chris as he uh, makes this thing happen. All right, now you are officially entered into Katie Camville. So what are we doing here? We're not, I thought he was gonna paint the entire wall black and then paint over it, but this just shows how much I do not know. Oh, so you hold all three of them. Yeah, it's easier that I can go back and forth. The hardest part is keeping these angles straight. I, I mentioned it earlier. Uh, as I go further in the piece, I tend to like, the angles start to get longer and, and more slopey. So I have to watch it. Like this one is already, this one looks good. This one's a little short. I gotta kind of extend it out a little. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah, I would have. I would have done that too. <laughs> The whole time I always tease Spencer, I'm like, when you're ready for the pro, AKA me to come and finish it up for you, just let me know. So, another thing is, um, because I'm traditional graffiti, I don't use any guides or tape or any cardboard or anything to make these lines. I use the cutback technique that I was showing you guys earlier. You, there's, no, there's no real rules anymore because street art has kind of come in and people use stencils and all sorts of things and guides and tape. And, Whatever, it's just my technique to go freehand, so therefore it gets, I have to, you know, take a lot of time to kind of make it tight and, and, you know, for me, I want it to be tight. But just so you know, this is all freehand stuff, so what you're seeing, you know. So don't judge too harshly. No, when it's, <laughs> when, it, when it's close up, yeah. I think it looks fabulous. So how long do you reckon this is gonna take you? Oh boy, I, you never know. I, I'm just always fighting the clock, especially today because we have an appointment later. Right. My guess is he'll go up to the minute at two o'clock. <laughs> That's my guess, but he did do a lot so far. I got here and this whole side is done. So, well, mostly done. So that's pretty cool. Getting it. So right now Spence is using that really, really dark forest green that we were originally a little bit worried about against the black when we were picking out these colors yesterday. Yeah. But you know what? I think it actually works because when it's in the sun, like this, and it's dry, you can actually, I don't know if it's registering on camera, but you can actually see the difference. I think it was a good choice. also have this massive mural which I kind of want to show you the the size scale of it if these are about up to my neck like these poles right here so just to kind of give you a reference of how massive this is
We also have a Selena Gomez, Tommy Lasorda. Look at how awesome these are. Look at how much it's like you turn your back for like five minutes and they do so much in that time. It's kind of wild. That's kind of the best part about watching this. And what's nice is the face coverings. We didn't have those the first time I came to watch Spencer paint. It was also like 100 degrees that day. And um, I remember I had like a shirt over because the fumes are, are pretty intense. Luckily I can stand away from it, but I like that facial coverings are pretty much mandated now. So it works out for me. I don't have to smell paint fumes at all. What time did you start at, Spence? Uh, maybe nine o'clock. Nine, okay. So let's look at the clock and see how many hours in we are. It's 11.30, so we're only a few hours in and he's got this much done. Still on the first three cans too. Really? Yeah. Wow. Making them last. So another videographer is interviewing Spencer. He's just asking a bunch of questions like, you know, what inspired you and like, what is this piece? And it's kind of cool because he's not even from America. So I love listening to his accent when he asks questions. Okay, I've just been informed that we're finally getting to like towards the end and remember Spencer is on a very big time crunch today. He doesn't Time like to normally. Not my today. No, I mean he's having to do what would normally take him nine hours in like five. So this is really good. Considering your time crunch. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, this is where it gets really exciting. I get to kind of spray some of the black outline. See where the white is? I get to spray black there. Now I can't get too close because I tried right there and eh, it's not that great, but Spence can fix it if I make a mistake. But at the same time, it's like, it's a good time saver for him and it's like entertaining your child. Right, Spencer? Yeah. Oh, there you are. <laughs> Ooh, obviously that's nothing, but I just want you to see some K-T. <laughs> Just, you know what, let me keep still, let's go to secrets of, um, let me stop and go. Okay. And let me keep still at this, and you're like Tim Murray, and I'm doing the spray, hands, back, motion. Okay. Cool, cool. Right, go. I'm gonna use that, the goalpost. Okay, not yet, not yet, ready. Rolling, go. Go. Go, change. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, brother. Okay, here's our update. Oh my goodness. Look how awesome this looks. And it's only been a few hours and already getting extremely close to the end. But that black, he was right, once the black came in, it just, it, it, it really did. Look at that. I am bringing you up. <laughs> oh well, gonna have to spray, spray, spray. Oh man, that part is the tedious part in my opinion. I like it because I'm confident in this. I do too. <laughs> <laughs> Can't mess.
mess this up, can you? <laughs> okay, and it's about 2.15. The final touches and we are actually, we need to be out of here in about five minutes. All right, so we had to leave, had an appointment we had to go to, but now we're back, it's, it's a couple hours later, and we had to uh, fix a few things. Once I look at a photo of it, I always find something that I didn't see in person. So the event uh, that I was talking about is kind of underway now. So there'll be some music, we'll have to edit around it. But I'm gonna finish what I started. <laughs> Couple little things, little touch-ups, and then we'll see what's going on in here. So it was a whole section I forgot to get right there because this piece of wood distracted me, but I got to take that green all the way across and finish that. By the way, this is Dirt Cobain. I don't know if I introduced you yet to the vlog, what up? but this is one of my homies. Uh, we've been painting out around these parts for, shoot man. I'd say about seven years. Easily, right? Alone, exactly. And alone how long you've been painting out here. Right, dude. Dirt Cobain, I've showed you guys a lot of his work today, so there's the man behind. Cheers, brother. All the artwork, there he is. The ghost spray paint. Yeah, baby. Look who showed up, Mr. Smart. What up, dude? In the flesh, what's up? That's right, man. Yeah, uh, talented, talented dude. Really good dude on top of that. That's more importantly, a good positive energy. Yes. Uh, <laughs> you make the world better, man. Thank you, bro. And uh, in your exploits, you've been traveling, painting a lot. I see your style just getting better and better and better, and it's fun to watch, man. Thank you, bro. It is. Oh, dude. Seriously, bro. Oh, man. No, I want to be like you, smart. Oh, man. No, seriously. So good to see you, bro. I'm gonna put your uh, your socials in the lower third of the video, so you can watch this guy. You're gonna want to follow his stuff. He's amazing, and uh, just you'll get a lot of good energy from this dude. So, my man, the legendary Vile has shown up. What up, Vile? Good to see you, man. I'll put your socials in the lower third. Right there. You see him? Yeah. Yeah. You guys got to check out this dude's work. He is on another level and he's a good homie and I haven't seen him in a long time. Really good to see you, man. The legendary Create has dropped on the scene. What's up, man? I haven't seen you in a bit. What up, what up? This is the one and only grand, incredible Mr. King Create, representing Los Angeles, California from South LA. Over here on Melrose, supporting Ghost Spray Paint. You know what I'm saying? We here representing. And uh, man, just holding it down for the culture of the LA graph movement. We trying to revive LA, not that LA is dead. Right. We're just trying to bring it back with that energy. That's right. That we used to have and be able to uh, display a certain quality and level of style and skill and to put LA on the map because now that this art form is global, a lot of people have elevated their skills. This is true. And so it's, it's, it's mandatory that we as artists uh, give our blueprint to what we do, but to show the world like we still got ours too, you know? That's right, That's man. very important, man, but, you know, and it is also important to teach the young people, because if we don't, it's gonna be a big generation gap where um, the young people, they are gonna be misguided, be misled, they won't know history. Not only will they not know history, but they won't even have the skills and techniques right. to take it to another level. Right. So yeah, so that's what's up. The so, true, uh, truer words have never been spoken, man. Oh, that yeah. is so good to see you, man. And uh, you always keep me inspired. Oh yeah. You have that's, never. That's your piece right there. Yeah, huh? yeah, yeah. I yeah. just uh, came this morning, and uh, yeah. you know, I get down with a little bit of isometrics and what, that's and really uh, clean and crispy right there. Thanks, man. Good seeing you, man. Yeah, I got a boom. Got a plus press. All right, there it is. Finished piece. Had to do a few touch-ups, but I'm happy with it. Uh, sometimes you just gotta walk away. I, I still see imperfections, but you just have to walk away and just let it be. Uh, like I said, I'm about 90% happy with it. 
always room for improvement, but that's that's why I keep coming back to this stuff. All right, well, that's going to wrap it up from the Melrose Alleys over here at the Fame Yard. That was quite a fun day. Yes, it was. I had such a good time. Hope you guys enjoyed it. A little Something a little different for us, but uh, not different for me. I've been doing this my whole life. and uh, I think it's good to be able to see your uh, yeah. artistic talent. Maybe we'll do more of this kind of stuff. If, uh, if you guys like it, though, and yeah. you want to see more, let us know by giving it a thumbs up and subscribing to our channel. Yeah, what she said. We'll see you next time on Best Life and Beyond. Bye-bye, everybody.